Hi, I'm Sarah, and I am back with another RPG in a Box tutorial. We'll be going over the rest of the options on the Voxel Editor's toolbar in this video. Capture Thumbnail, Capture Portrait, an in-depth look at the Noise Generator, Capture Image to File, the Editor Settings for the Voxel Editor, and Full Screen Mode. So let's open up RPG in a Box and get started. Capture Thumbnail. This option captures an image to use for the model's preview thumbnail in the 3D Asset tab. Thumbnails for models are generated by default, so this option might seem useless at first, but it's actually very useful for models where the default thumbnail doesn't show the difference between the models. There's a good example of this in the default dungeon stairs. Both models look exactly the same based on the automatically generated thumbnail, but if we open both models and look at the back of them, we can see that one is designed to be used with the plain brick wall, while the other is designed to be used with the moss top wall. Let's move the camera so that we can see that the models are both stairs and have a different back. We can save this custom camera angle, which we learned how to do in the first voxel editor tutorial, then capture a custom thumbnail for both. And now we have much better thumbnails for the models. You need to have a character model open to see the next option, which is Capture Portrait. It allows you to easily create character portraits, and it opens a wizard to create portrait images, which you can use in the dialogue editor. The wizard allows you to drag and resize a selection box. Click Accept. Then name the portrait in the image name field. Choose the image size of the portrait with the image size dropdown. Choose where your selection is positioned with the positioning grid. And finally, choose how your selection is cropped with the trim checkbox, which toggles trimming of empty space from your initial selection when positioning the image. So if your selection was off-center like mine was, but you want your portrait to be centered, you should leave trim checked. But if you want your portrait to be positioned exactly like your selection, you should uncheck the trim option. Click OK and your image will be saved. The next option is the noise generator, which can only be accessed on tile models. If you have a tile open, you'll see a gray staticky square icon, which is the noise generator. Using it will overwrite the first layer of your tile, so I'm going to create a new tile to demonstrate it. I'll click New Resource, create a tile, name it, and now we have a confirmation dialog asking if we want our tile to be passable or impassable. Should characters be allowed to walk on this tile by default? Select Passable for tiles such as grass floors and roads. Select Impassable for walls and other structural or decorative tiles. As a side note, you can always edit the navigation for individual tiles in the map editor, so no matter what this setting is, you'll have the final say in whether a specific tile is passable or not when you're creating maps. And if that is super confusing, don't worry about it. It will all make sense once you start making your own maps. I'm going to choose Passable although it really doesn't matter since we're just messing around with the noise generator. Let's try out the noise generator. This is a handy tool for creating tiling textures, such as dirt, grass, water, sand, cement, carpet, anywhere you want a random textured surface. There are two images. The first represents what the tile itself will look like. The second shows what the tile will look like placed in a four x four grid. Clicking generate, will generate a new tile. Clicking the color box for base color will allow you to select a new color to be used as the base for tile generation. Click anywhere outside of that box and click generate to create a new tile once you select a new color. Octaves can be set from one to six. The lower the number, the less detailed your noise will be. The higher the number, the more detailed. 
period can be set from 1 to 1,000, and it affects how much variation there is to the texture. The lower the number, the larger the variation, while higher numbers result in softer, more subtle variation. Persistence can be set from 0 to 1, and it works as sort of a multiplier to the octave value. Lower numbers will result in a softer effect, while higher numbers result in a stronger effect. Finally, we have lacunarity, which can be set from 1 to 1,000. This value changes how much the period affects the octave value. Lower numbers result in a more subtle variation, while higher numbers result in a noisier texture. While it might seem that these settings all do basically the same thing, they can mix and match to create some pretty cool effects from very soft to gentle textures. Let's say 6 for octave, 750 for period. 0.1 for persistence, 750 for lacunarity, some nice like carpet texture, to some strange otherworldly effects. 6 for octave, let's do 3 for period, 0.1 for persistence, and then 50 for lacunarity. You get some like really kind of gross, creepy looking stuff. So take some time play around with the noise generator and see what you can come up with. Once you've generated a texture that you like, just click OK, and your texture will be placed on the bottom layer of your tile, ready to be saved and used in a map, or edited and built upon. Capture Image to File opens a wizard with a resizable selection box, which saves your selected image into an image file in your project's images folder. Editor Settings opens the voxel editor section of the Editor Settings dialog. The first six options allow you to change the default colors of different parts of the voxel editor. To change a color, just click on the colored box, select a new color, click outside of the color picker, while the green arrow will reset the color back to the default. Anti-aliasing will allow you to enable and set the strength of anti-aliasing used in the voxel editor. This softens the jagged look that hard edges can have. However, it is very resource heavy and this setting only affects the view in the voxel editor itself, not in your game. So I recommend leaving it off unless you're taking screenshots or using the Capture Portrait or cap Capture Image to File functions of the Voxel Editor. New Tile Passability. This setting affects the prompt that we saw earlier when making a new tile. It allows you to select from the Tile Passability prompt, always being shown, or you can set it so that new tiles are automatically set as either passable or impassable by default. If you're making a lot of tiles of one type, say terrains that you want all to be passable, and you're getting tired of seeing the prompt, this can be a helpful setting to save you a few mouse clicks. Next is a section of on-off toggles, which will allow you to set the default display state of the grid, voxel outlines, surface edges, ambient occlusion, and ground options that we learned about earlier on the voxel toolbar. For example, Turning voxel outlines to off by default will set the voxel outlines off when restarting the software or opening models. Once you have your editor settings the way you want them, click OK to save or cancel to exit without saving changes. Finally, we have full screen mode. This makes the voxel editor full screen. It can be entered and exited by either clicking the icon or by using the hotkey F11. And with that, we've covered the entire toolbar for the Voxel Editor. Thank you all so much for watching. You are all awesome. 
If this tutorial series has been helpful and you'd like to learn more about RPG in a Box, then please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Let me know any comments or feedback you have down below. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Bye-bye!